Today we are looking at the SM1 outdoor microphone manufactured by ETS Incorporated. This is a professional quality microphone that we've been selling for a while now. Because it is a professional product, it's not exactly a plug and play microphone solution. And for that reason, we have developed this sort of plug and play kit which includes all the adapters and accessories needed to make this professional outdoor microphone work with just about any DVR with an RCA audio input. So what I'd like to do is basically go through and show how this kit works and how you can hook up this microphone to your DVR. And I will also uh, show how you can install this microphone the sort of pro way where you do not utilize this kit and you actually only need a couple additional parts that uh, you can also get from Ellipse Security if needed. So to begin, I will start with the contents of the kit. Um, I will begin with the microphone, which is here in the center. It's basically designed that it can be wall mounted. It has the same bolt pattern as uh, like a light switch plate, for instance. So it could actually be bolted to a uh, electrical box, like conduit box. Um, and uh, you know, if needed, you could even install a new workbox into drywall and put one of these in pretty easily. Or you could even, uh, you know, if this was being uh, attached outside to a brick wall or something, it would be as simple as drilling a hole and just uh, having the wires and everything running through the hole, and this just mounted directly to the concrete or brick. The microphone itself has a sort of tube sticking off of the front with a slant cut and this is basically to prevent uh, rain water and moisture from accumulating inside the microphone itself and it also has this sort of expanded uh, plastic foam in here which serves the same purpose uh, it comes with this gasket um, basically just to serve as a seal behind the microphone and it has provisions for all sorts of different holes and things that you could punch through uh, for running your wires. The real business end is this little board on the back here and uh, this has quite a few things on it and this this is really what makes this microphone stand out from a lot of the more plug-and-play inexpensive microphones. So to begin uh, it has these jumpers here which uh, they do a line level uh, input so by default it will be set at line level but you can also change it to mic level which uh, I think would typically just be used for connecting directly to an IP camera um, I've personally never actually used it I've always just left it how it comes um, and how you would use it in this kit would be at line level um, and that's basically using the amplification on the board the other jumpers are basically to change the frequency response of the microphone. So by default, it has a frequency response of 500 hertz to 13 kilohertz, and uh, it's you know really a quite a wide range. Um, and so by playing with the jumpers, you can actually decrease this frequency response down to uh, 900 hertz to 6 kilohertz. So that could be really helpful if you need to cut out. Uh, cut out background noise and uh, it'll basically just leave the sort of frequencies that people are normally speaking and you could just get a better quality recording that way uh, you know it's very handy in industrial settings or perhaps nearby uh, roadways where there's cars going by and there's just constant noise you might be able to cut a lot of that noise out with these uh, high and low pass filters um, additionally there is a gain adjustment this is yet another thing that I've never had to adjust on these microphones. They, they leave it sort of set in the middle by default and it's always seemed to work really well for me. If you had any kind of distortion you could try turning the gain down or if you just wanted to play with it it's possible you could kind of dial it in a little better. But um, for the most part I think that can just normally be left alone. And uh, finally the these uh, green plug on the end here is basically how you connect the power uh, power and ground and audio connections and we'll get back to that later when we talk about how to uh, use this kit. This is the power supply that comes with the kit 
It's rated at 500 milliamps, which is more than adequate for powering this microphone and uh, should be good even going down pretty long cable runs uh, without having too much voltage drop. It's really a pretty low power draw. This is the cable that will be used with the kit. Uh, this is called a VAP-65 cable. It's uh, basically a 65 foot video audio power cable. That's where the part number comes from. Um, it has uh, you know, obviously a power connection and then these two RCA connections and what it's really designed to do is to allow you to hook up a microphone and a camera at the same time using the same run which is uh, typically what people want to do but uh, we sell this with this kit just because it natively has RCA connections and it will allow people in the future to add a camera if they want to use it for that or if they're just running the cable by itself, they can basically just ignore the other RCA connection and just use one of them. Additionally, the kit comes with both adapters that are needed to convert both this RCA and power connection on this pre-made cable to bare wire connectors which will be connected to that uh, green plug that we saw on the back of the microphone. Um, this is the power connector here and then this is the RCA to sort of speaker wire breakout which will be used for the audio connection. Okay, so step one of using this kit is probably the most difficult step. And this is the place where a lot of people struggle. And um, it's really very simple. It's just uh, the instructions are not that clear. And hopefully this video will uh, make this a lot easier to actually be able to see it done. And uh, basically what we're going to do is attach these uh, R this RCA and power adapter to these screw terminals on the microphone. And uh, there's basically, there's three terminals here and they're marked uh, 12 volt, audio, and COM. COM stands for common ground and that's basically going to be the negative and on uh, both of the adapters. So the black wire, the uh, negative of the power, and on the audio adapter, it also has one of the wires which is marked as the audio negative, essentially. So um, the first step is basically to go in here and back these off a little bit so that you have enough room inside the screw terminals for the wires and uh, it just takes a couple twists and then they're pretty loose and then we're going to take our adapters here which uh, uh, are not actually marked plus or minus or anything like that what you're basically looking for is on this one is that it has a stripe this is the RCA uh, breakout that basically has an RCA on one end and then uh, these kind of speaker wires on the other end and um, the, basically you have a white stripe on one of the wires and that is, uh, for lack of a better word, the positive of the audio connection. With the power wire it's a little more clear because you have black and red and they're actually stuck together so you can kind of spread them apart to give yourself a little something to work with. Um, and there's really not much exposed bare wire on these so this is a situation where you might want to use one of the best tools in the universe, a razor blade. And uh, you can very simply come in here and uh, lightly cut into the shielding a little bit. You don't want to go through the wire, obviously, but you'll just kind of uh, go into the insulation a little bit and kind of score it all the way around. And then uh, you can kind of tear off some of this extra insulation and uh, get a little more extra wire to work with. Just like that. You got some little more, little more wire to work with there. Makes it a little easier. And what you're going to end up doing is combining the black wire of the power and the wire without the stripe on the audio connection into uh, and both and put them together into that common ground. So I'm heading to twist those together to make it a little easier on myself and uh, 
it's important that both of them go in there and make good contact. Basically, we're going to try and get the hard one out of the way. We're going to get the common ground out of the way. Okay, so... Slide those in there together. And I'm just going to tighten it down with uh, the screwdriver. And get it snug. And uh, basically, that's a connection. I can kind of pull on it, and it's it's holding. Okay, and so then from there, we will just move on down the line. The next one, the center one, is the audio. So we take the wire with the white stripe, and we'll just uh, kind of bend that down and get it into the audio there. Make sure it's pushed in all the way. You may actually find it helpful to fold the wire in on itself a little bit. Um, you can kind of double it up to get a little more bite on the wire, but um, or you might find that you need to trim it even because the audio ones are a little bit long on this pigtail. And we'll move right along to the 12 volt finally, which I should mention that this microphone will also run on 24 volt as that's what it says on the uh, on this uh, uh, board here. It's got printed on the silk screen uh, 12 volt and 24 volt, but uh, we just run them on 12. Because that's, uh, you know, the same, basically keep it on the same voltage as what the cameras are normally running on. Just keep it real simple. And so that that's hooked up. Now, as far as connections goes, this is the easy part. And the reason I say that is because this is, in reality, what would normally be the most difficult part, which would be to run this cable uh, up and through your attic and through walls. And, you know, just making cable runs is really the most difficult part of CC CCTV install, in my opinion. Um, but as far as connections, this is all very straightforward. Uh, it's just like, um, uh, you know, hooking up uh, a VCR to your television. You've got... You know, you'll you'll have flashbacks to the '90s when you were using these RCA connectors to uh, to hook up everything. So um, this is the the end of the cable here that would be at the microphone, and the way you can tell that is that it has the male power connector on it, and as you can see, very easily plugs in there. Uh, now these RCAs are both the same. Color preference is kind of up to you. Yellow should normally be video, so I'm just gonna use white out of habit. Really does not matter. That's connected there. We're gonna slide this on down. So this would be the end that you would then have coming out of your wall or wherever to where your DVR is. So, uh, you know, here's your power supply. Plugs in there. Microphone is now powered. This has to plug into the wall, obviously. And then uh, whatever color RCA you used on the other side, you have to use on this side. And you know, so I use the white. This would plug into the DVR, and you would have a functioning microphone on your DVR. Simple as that. Now let's say that you ran this microphone and uh, you decide that uh, you want to go ahead and add a camera out there while you're at it. Well, the cable comes with these supplied BNC to RCA adapters. And so this is being used, you know, connected to your RCA input on your DVR. You would go ahead and put this on here. And now you have just turned this RCA connector into a BNC connector. And uh, you would connect that to one of your camera inputs on your DVR. And uh, same story on the other end. You would take your additional uh, RCA that's out by the microphone, put the same adapter on here. Now it's just like a B and C run that you would use to connect a camera. Um, the one trick and the one additional thing that you would need to make this all work is this little power splitter. So obviously this cable only has one power connector and we just use that to connect the microphone 
and uh, you know the camera needs power too. So uh, pull this over here. You would have to add in this power splitter. Hook your microphone up, and now you have a power and a VNC for adding a camera. And uh, you would then, you know, you, you would have essentially what would be equivalent to like a audio, uh, you know, an outdoor audio bullet camera, except you're going to get a much, mo most likely a better camera and most definitely a much better microphone. All right, now that amateur hour is over, I will show you the more professional way that you can hook up this microphone. And uh, this is basically a method that is employing uh, any kind of bulk wire, but uh, what I would probably recommend is just to use Category 5 uh, Ethernet cable. Um, you can buy spools of Cat5e cable at uh, any kind of local hardware store, or you can uh, buy it from Ellipse Security directly. And um, here's handy. Uh, just a bit of Cat5 that I had laying around that I'm going to use for this demonstration. Um, this isn't even Cat5e, it's just some regular old Cat5. It's uh, borderline useless for making Ethernet cables at this point, um, but it's perfect for this type of thing. So first I'm basically going to make some exposed wires that I can then use to connect to the microphone in those screw terminals that we're now very familiar with. And then on the other side, I will show how to use these uh, screw terminal to power adapter and this screw terminal to B and C, which can be adapted to RCA, just like that, to uh, make the other connections that you need. So here you can see I've cut back the outside insulation on one end of this Cat5 cable. And then I've uh, selected three wires out of the eight that I want to use and then the other ones I just uh, cut short uh, to keep them out of the way and what we're going to go ahead and do is screw these three wires into the screw terminals on this microphone just like we did before. In fact uh, it's actually this is a little bit easier because you don't have those two kind of common grounds linked um, making everything harder on yourself. We're actually going to uh, have that all kind of uh, linked up on the other side. This is another situation where the colors don't really matter. Uh, you know, these colors are all designed for uh, just giving you a guideline when making ethernet cables. So what you do with them here is uh, of no consequence really. Um, I'm just going to do it like this. And as long as you hook them up the same way on the other side, it will all work out. Easy as cake. That was actually quite a bit faster. So I've got that connected. I'll lay that here. Now we simply do that on the other end. We're going to put the what is marked as COM or common ground on the board into the negative side of this power to screw terminal little adapter and then we're going to put the 12 volt into the positive side of the screw terminal adapter crank down on those a little bit now we just have the audio connector So as we sit here, we may think that we are done, but that is actually one of the most common mistakes of electronics is to leave out this one part, and that is linking the grounds. 
So as I mentioned before, that uh, that one screw terminal is basically called a common ground, and that's because it is the ground both for the power and for the audio. And as we've connected it here, we have the power grounded, but the audio is not grounded, and it's not going to work properly like this. So what we need to do is cut off a little extra bit of Cat5 cable, and uh, what we're trying to source here is just a small piece of wire like this, which we'll use to link our grounds. So uh, in order to do that, we need to start by connecting the wire to the negative marking, the, the negative side of the B and C, uh, which is adapted to RCA audio connector. So uh, just get this tightened down. And then what we're going to do is just kind of use this to create a bridge and pair this up with the uh, with the wire that is going into the negative power screw terminal on the other connector here. So we'll just loosen that back up. Get it inserted in over here. And uh, once they're both in there and you know you're going to get good connection, you can go ahead and tighten that back down and snug it up. So here's the completed product. As you can see, in many ways it is simpler than using the kit, but it does require some wiring that is uh, really a put off to a lot of people. and. Um, you know, if you're not really familiar with stripping wires and doing things like that, you may not want to attempt this and you might just want to stick with the plug and play kit that we've developed. But uh, if you're not afraid of uh, doing a little bit of wiring, this is really uh, kind of the way to go. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you're interested in seeing more videos like these, like the Ellipse Security Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, our mission is your protection.